Alright guys, time to finish chapter 4. And to finish it off, we're going to do various parameters. So, it's all led up to here. Uh, now we're going to be dealing with equations of the form y prime prime plus a y prime plus b y is equal to g of t, where g of t uh, isn't the summer product of exponential polynomial sinusoidal forms. Um, we're going to be looking at those, but just to kind of uh, put you at ease, you can use this method for those as well. Like, you don't have to technically ever do undetermined coefficients anymore, but you'll see that sometimes doing method of undetermined coefficients is faster than doing this method. It basically comes down to what is easier, uh, calculus or algebra, for a given scenario. So if you find one method being too long, try the other one. If you're in the uh, subsection that method of undetermined coefficients or various parameters can work. If you don't have product or sums of the following three, then you have to do this method. Uh, one quick thing that I want to reiterate, uh, the coefficient in front of the y prime prime has to be one here, okay, for my method to work. Um, so if for some reason it's like a three in front, just divide the whole equation by three. It's the it's the same thing, right? You can divide by three. Uh, you can divide by any constant because you're not violating any rules. So just keep that in mind. Actually, I'll even write it in just to make it clear. There has to be an implied one right here. Okay, so then a couple disclaimers. So this is depending on which professor you have for 1550, not 1552, 2552. Uh, this is the longest problem you're going to have to do at Georgia Tech's version of a, force, a first course in ordinary differential equations. There are follow-up courses to ODE, um, and there are problems way longer than this. But for this one, this is, depending on who you have, the longest problem you'll ever have to do. So if you can do this one, you should be good at least time-wise. Then the next thing is this method isn't in the book. Okay, this is something that I picked up my first semester when I took differential equations, actually, not even when I was teaching. So this was about three or four years ago. Um, but from my experience as teaching and as an engineer, I prefer this method a whole lot more than what's in the book. So, and hopefully you'll agree. I think this is more methodical and you'll be able to get to your answer a lot quicker and with less of a chance of uh, creating an error. So let's get to it. The method is as follows. So take that equation again, right? Y prime prime plus a y prime plus b y is equal to g of t, and you do the following things. As always, you should. This is always a good thing to do. Find the complementary solution. Set g of t is equal to zero. Do your lambdas. Find the characteristic polynomial or equation, whatever I called it, and find uh, the linear combination of the two linearly independent solutions that you come up with, whether they be e lambda one t e lambda 2t, or e lambda t, t e lambda t, or e alpha t cosine beta t, and e alpha t sine beta t. Doesn't matter. Whatever you have is what you have, right? From there, you want to compute the following three Ronskins. So, if you remember from before, Ronskin is just you put the functions uh, each in their column and then take derivatives down until you get a square matrix. So, if you're here, you want to make sure that this y1 is the same as this y1 here. This y2 is the same as this y2 here. So don't get unorganized when it comes to this, otherwise you're not going to get the right answer. This is just a determinant, so it's AD minus BC. And then you want to also calculate these uh, modified Ronskins where W subscript 1 is going to be, you replace the first column with 0 and then G of T, and you calculate the same thing. And then Ronskin 2 is you replace the second column with 0 G of T. Then I'm posing to you that the particular solution is going to be going to, be, going to be given as u1 times y1 plus u2 times y2. How do you find this u1? Because you already have this y1 and y2 that we solved for before. u1 prime, so the derivative of it with respect to t, is going to be w1 over w. So whatever these functions come out to be. And then w2 prime is equal to w2 over w. So... Hence why we get the name variation of parameters. You're varying the parameter in front of y1 and y2 to find your particular solution. Because it's just whatever you multiply, whatever you get from here is what you multiply until uh, y1 and y2. Uh, and so a key point, this is where you would ever get difficulty. So as long as you can integrate this, you're going to be able to find a solution. 
And this is where professors can really make this tricky. If need be, it can be a very complicated integral. Um, but hopefully they don't do that to you on test or quiz. So just hope for that. Also, th I mean, this is where Georgia Tech as well. So I don't know. Hope for the best. And then finally, your general solution is always the same. Yc plus yp. So c1, y1 plus c2, y2 plus u1, y1 plus u2, y2. No arbitrary constants in front of the particular solution, hence why it's called particular. So let's just go through the method for a problem, and we'll call it a chapter 4. Right? OK. So we want to solve y prime prime plus 4y prime plus 4y is equal to t to the minus 2 times e to the minus 2t. Now, you may be asking me, oh, this is a this is a polynomial times a sinusoid. Like, Sebastian, why can't we just do this? Um, remember, the integer in the exponent of the t, so this is t to the minus 2. That isn't greater than 0. And also, you can't find a closed uh, derivative formula for this, right? Therefore, we have to use variation of parameters. So, first things first calculate our complementary solution. This will be given as lambda squared plus 4 lambda plus 4 is equal to 0. This comes down to be lambda plus 2 squared is equal to 0. Therefore, lambda is equal to minus 2. And I write multiplicity, too. Um, when we get into chapters 3 and 6, you'll see why. But you can also write repeated, um, or you can write minus 2, minus 2, whatever you want. But this is just my force of habit that I've acquired over the past three or four years that I've been doing these uh, equations, so minus two. So this means that our complementary solution was given as what? If you remember from the cases, this is c1e to the minus 2t plus c2 times t e to the minus 2t. We multiplied by t. Kind of like redundancy, right? So kind of keep that in mind. Everything just kind of ties in together uh, at this point. So what's our next step? Let me look back to what our uh, methods were. Compute the Ronskians. Great. So I'm going to designate this as y1. I'm going to designate this as y2. As I'm going to need to take derivatives of these, I'm just going to write them over here so I don't do them in the Ronskian. y1 prime is equal to minus 2 e to the minus 2. y2 prime is given as e to the minus 2 uh, minus, right, yeah, minus to e to the minus 2t, and that's just the same as e to the minus 2t times 1 minus 2t. Cool. So let's write our Ronskins. So w is going to be given as e to the minus 2t minus 2 e to the minus 2t. Uh, what was this one? t e to the minus 2t times e to the minus 2t, 1 minus 2t. Cool. Let's calculate this one. Right. This is, let's see, we need to go this way minus this one, right? So that's e to the minus 4t times 1 minus 2t, and then minus, that will be an e to the minus 4t times minus 2t. So that's just a plus 2t. So what comes out of here is an e to the minus 4t. How convenient. Cool. So this is w. We'll keep that, because we'll need it in a second. Next is w1, right? Make sure my pen works. Yep. w1 will be given as we put 0 here, and then we put g of t. Um, I'm going to write it this way, over t squared. OK? Then we put t e minus 2t. And then I really could just leave this out, because 0 times whatever is going to be 0. But for consistency, I'll write it on here. This is e minus 2t, 1 minus 2t. Right? Now, what is this? This is going to be 0 minus. So it's whatever the minus of this diagonal is. Um, and so that is going to be minus 1 over t times e to the minus 4t. So that'll be known as w1. Then w2 is pretty similar. Now we leave our first column, e minus 2t minus 2, e minus 2t, and then we put our 0 and our e minus 2t over t squared over here. 
and then this comes out to be 1 over t squared e to the minus 4t. That's w2. Cool. Now, what is what do we have to do now? We have to solve for u1 and u2. So remember from the steps that u1 prime is given as w1 over w. So we'll solve for that one right now. That is equal to w1 was minus 1 over t e to the minus 4t divided by, oh, this is great, look, e to the minus 4t. This one's going to be really easy to integrate, right? I hope, right? Hopefully your integral skills are good. And then u2 prime is going to be given as w2 over w. w2 over w, what was our w2? 1 over t squared e to the minus 4t divided by e to the minus 4t. Ah, great. 1 over 2 t squared. Very easy integrals. So, let's just do them. Therefore, u1 is just the integral of minus 1 over t dt. Now, I should warn you, we're not, we shouldn't get a plus c because this is really the integral where you do the dummy variable so that you don't get a plus c. We just want to find the exact antiderivative of this. Um, I won't do that just because I don't want to confuse anyone. I know for some people that kind of confuses you and to, oh, we're really taking definite integrals. Like, what are we integrating? Blah, blah, blah. For now, like, just, just know I don't want a plus c, okay? Because this is the particular solution. There shouldn't be plus c's anyway in our particular solution. And if there is, then that would just give us our entire solution accordingly, right? Technically, because if we put, uh, if uh, whatever this integral is, and I'll just do this right now, negative ln of absolute value of t, if I added a plus c, then that would give me plus c times y1, which we already have included in our um, complementary solution. So th this is perfectly valid. Just leave it here. Don't find the plus c's for this, even though I'm kind of abusing notation at this point, but it's fine, okay? So this is u1. u2 is given as the integral of 1 over t squared dt. And that is just minus 1 over t. Cool. Now, let's write our particular solution and notice some things. Because I picked up this problem to illustrate a pretty crucial point. So yp of t is given as u1 y1 plus u2 y2. Right? And so my u1 was minus ln of absolute value of t times e to the minus 2t. Be very careful what you define as y1 and uh, y2. Make sure it's consistent, because otherwise, if I wasn't careful, I would have multiplied this by t e minus 2t, and that would not have given me the right answer. And then here, I'm going to have my plus u2, which is up here, is minus 1 over t times my y2, which was t e minus 2t. So let's multiply this out. This will give me a minus ln of t times e to the minus 2t plus, and then over here, notice, we're going to get a minus e to the minus 2t. OK, so if you don't see it now, let's keep moving forward, and you'll see it then. Our total solution is what? y is equal to yc plus yp, right? Our yc was c1 e to the minus 2t plus c2 t e to the minus 2t minus, and so then our yp contribution is minus ln of t e to the minus 2t minus e to the minus 2t. You might be like yelling right now because like, oh my god, we have redundancy, what are we going to do? Method of undetermined coefficients, like, oh my god, differential equation is the worst. Don't worry about it, right? This is technically c1 minus 1 times e to the minus 2t. This is variation parameters way of telling us that we don't have a second, I guess, second part of the particular solution. It just gets absorbed into c1. So you can write your solution as c1 e to the minus 2t plus c2 t e to the minus 2t minus ln of t e to the minus 2t and you're done. This is how you do it. Do it every time. This is how you get your solutions for set, uh, variation parameters. Their difficulty is going to come in if you can integrate it. So be careful with that. Also, you should be practicing integrals. This is differential equations. You're going to have equations with uh, derivatives in them. It's good if you know how to integrate very well. 
And that covers chapter four. Um, as of right now, I don't know which way I'm going to take this. I can either go into Laplace transforms or I can go into systems of Diffie Q's. More than likely, I'm going to go into systems of Diffie Q's just because that makes the most sense. That's how most professors like to teach it. I personally took it that chapter four and then I went to Laplace. Um, but that was a very weird case, I guess, because I haven't seen other people do it. So more than likely systems, uh, but who knows? I might change my mind and do Laplace. So stay tuned for that, and uh, yeah, you're done with Chapter 4.